Hey, it's AJ, the wax painter. It's a beautiful day here in the studio, but the birds are really quiet. I don't know what's up with them. And also we have in the studio today, we got Morty. Oop, where is he? Right there. Morty, he's really happy today. So I'm gonna set up the studio to prep some panels and I'll show you how I do that. I'm prepping my boards and I tape the sides. And as you can see, I still have some of the board visible. And I am a sloppy painter. So I go back in, I take my thick tape, and then I go in and I take a thinner tape to line this. So this way, when my panel is on the table, like that, it stays pristine. However, Sometimes I coat the entire side with wax medium because tape is expensive and tape goes into a landfill. So a lot of times I will just put a few coats of wax here and then I have to um, scrape it all off. Um, but since um, you may hear the birds chirping a little too much. I have the dog. <laughs> He's under the table, he's being very noisy. Um, so if you hear him hack or something, it's because he's eating the feathers that the birds are sloughing off. Okay, we have a 12 by 12 inch birch panel here. I taped my edges and my back. And over here, let me move this into the camera view. I have a turkey baster. I'll tell you the funny story of how this happened with wax. You could see my wax is tinted. Um, it's normally not. I actually accidentally dropped a brush when I was cleaning up in the wax that had red on it. But you know what? It'll be fine for this because I'm making a base coat. It'll show up better on the camera. The first thing I need to do is I need to heat up my panel. I have a nice gentle flame and I want to heat my board. Remember, keep the flame moving. If you have it in a spot, if I hold it in one spot too long, I'm going to burn it. See, I don't want to burn it. That can happen also with your heat gun. So we don't want to burn the board. Remember safety, I do have a fire extinguisher right over here actually to the left of me. Okay, my, my board is still a little on the cold side, so I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more. I like a nice warm panel to work on. And it is cold in here. I do have, I just shut the air conditioning off. Um, it does affect my work if it's, the air is blowing on me too much. In fact, okay, I'm gonna move my wax. Okay, I'm using a wide brush because I have a wide panel. I always tell people you wanna make it smooth, don't use little brushes. Use a, a proper brush to fit. And that glide on, nice and smooth. Now this side over here, I didn't have enough wax. I'm just gonna go back over in the area. I'm not worried about these little bumps. I'm gonna get them out. So that's my first coat of wax. Nice and light. I don't like thick wax because I'm gonna build up my layers. I turn my torch on again. I need to fuse this nice and even and I'm gonna look to make sure that it's shiny. And I'll go back and forth. None of this. I tell people that's not the safest thing for the canister. This has a lot, this panel has a lot of air bubbles on it. It's gonna be able to give me a little bit of a challenge, but it's okay. It's all good. Remember, keep a distance off of it. If I go too close, let me see if I can show you on this one. If I'm fusing and I put my flame really close, it's gonna push the, see it's melting and pushing it. And I actually burnt it. I don't want that on my base. I just wanna lightly fuse. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. And usually when I'm working and doing a prep, I'll spend a whole day of prepping and line up all my boards. So by the time I get to the last board, my first board is cool enough for me now to put the next layer. Okay, so we got a nice fuse still has a couple of shiny spots it's trying to cool down but I don't want it to get ice cold if I feel the bottom of this it's really warm 
So I'm gonna turn it. So we were this way. Now I'm gonna go this way. I'm right-handed, so I'm always going from left to right. So I'll always have more wax on one side. So every time I put on a layer, I turn the board and we're gonna do the exact same thing. I love board prep day. It's really relaxing for me. Um, sometimes I can prep 10 or 15 boards. It's really nice. So this one went on a lot smoother. I have to fuse again. Remember every layer I need to fuse. I want a little bit of a softer flame though. Cause I like a softer flame. Supposed to be a little quieter. And once again, if you're on your heat gun, you're gonna go back and forth with your heat gun and also watch the distance because heat guns have air and that air can move the wax. And like everything else, it's practice. If something blobs up and gets too thick, you can always scrape it back. I'm gonna let it cool. I don't know if you can see how there's, I don't know if it shows up on the camera. Like right over here, there's a bunch of shiny spots. So when you see the shine, it's fused. And what am I gonna do again? I'm gonna turn my board. And repeat, same thing. Now that one, I don't know if you saw, I spilt or I dripped some of my wax. I got a big blob. Don't panic, give it a minute. The flame will take it out. If it doesn't come out, I can always scrape it out, but I know I'm gonna get that out. And once again, I'm gonna fuse. You can probably see, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it shows up on the camera, the shine. But it's slow and steady. This is not speed work. I love getting a beautifully prepped board. Now, it has the red tint. Somebody's going to say, well, it's going to affect your painting. It is really so little. It's really not. You can see the difference. It may look a lot on camera, but in person, it's not. And that's okay. I'm going to have bright paint on here. But I will not use it in between um, unless I specifically want this. Um, so I'll just have a whole bunch of boards that are prepped with this red tint. That's fine. Turn my board. And once again, now this one had a little bit of something on it. I just picked it off because I could do that. You know, when you're working in a medium for a really long time, sometimes you're teaching and you're demonstrating. And here, I dripped again, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to get that out. I'm going to let this sit. Every time I hit my board with the torch, it's building up more heat. Okay. So I let that settle for a minute and I'm going to fuse again. And I'm coming up to the area that I have the blob. So I may just, see I just w went over it twice and it dissolved. So don't panic. I do have some air bubbles here on this one side of the panel. And like I said, I didn't let my panel sit. So what I'll probably end up doing with this is just letting it settle in, put the board aside, let it cool down, and then go back and put a coat of wax in that area or see what happens. Um, I may be able to get them out like here, make a really super soft flame and just dab on it. And that tends to sometimes get rid of them. Really like just kiss it. And then what I'll do is I'll let that cool and go over it again with um, another layer of wax. So if you can see from this, which we're stuck, see how messy I get? It's, you don't see any, it's really smooth. And it's also really hot. And that was only four coats. But because on this side here, I do have the air bubbles, I may put another coat on that. And that is pretty much what I do. I have no brush strokes. 
um, just nice and even, super smooth. And it just takes practice and just be calm and relaxed. But I'm gonna come back and show you the difference in brushes to help achieve. Okay, so when you're working on your boards, it's really important to have, um, to prep, excuse me, when you're prepping, to have a proper size brush. So this one is a seven inch brush. That is for really big work, as well as something like this is the one I was using. I'll put the links below for these brushes. Um, I've actually had these brushes for over 10 years, and the one that I was using, I've probably been using for 10 years, and I only use it to prep my boards. Smaller brushes like here, a, a small brush, this is a one and a, what is this, a one and a half? No, this is a two inch brush. I would have to do a lot of passes to get over. With this one, I only had to do three passes and it just happened to work really well. Um, if I use a really small piece of art, let me get a small piece. This is um, already painted, but I basically could just do with one, you know, or something, I don't, two. So a lot of times I see people with little chip brushes and little one inch brushes and a board like this trying to prep the board. And could I do it? Yeah, it's gonna take me a long time, but the bigger your board gets, just for your prepping, you wanna have a bigger brush. I will put the links below for these big brushes of where I've gotten them. Um, the boards come from um, artists and craftsmen. They are an employee owned, uh, employee-owned art supply company. They're throughout the United States. Um, I travel down to Miami to get my boards with them. Um, most of my brushes I've picked up at either encaustic conferences or I found them online. And sometimes, you know, whenever I travel and I go into an art store, there's always something unique that I find. Um, but that is how I prep my boards. I have been doing it this way. I very rarely just put paint directly on the board. Um, there's a reason why I do that. I will make another video on that. Please post your questions below on if you're having challenges or difficulties on achieving your smooth surface for your board prep. I'll happily be happy to answer them. Or if there's other videos that you'd like me to make, about encaustic, please list, list them below. There also will be a Patreon group um, for advanced techniques um, to learn about encaustic painting. So thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave comments, like, and um, wax on.